be about six months before he starts feeling any better. So he's got a long road to go. And his, yeah. his virus attacked his, his heart. Yeah. The lower muscle of his heart. Yeah. <coughs> what is your son's name? John. John. Who else? <laughs> Junior. That just makes sense. Easy to remember. It is, it is easy. <laughs> Let's remember John Jr. In Jesus' the third. name. John the third. My father's name. John the third. Nice. That's great. A family must like that name. They must. All three of us. They must. <laughs> Let's uh, remember DW. She's uh, under the weather. She's got a, some kind of stomach bug or something. She needs a healing touch. And let's remember AJ that there's we gotta believe that there's no infection in that toe and that whatever they have to do will be minimal in Jesus' name. Diane? Well Karen, of course. Yes. <laughs> yes, amen. Let's re yes. let's remember Karen, yeah. two ankles, a leg, uh, something in his wrist. Um, he's already had some surgeries that had more and, you know, a, a metal mm -hmm. all this stuff going on. And he's not even near where he lives. He's in Broward <coughs> County. He's in Palm Beach County. He's up there <coughs> motorcycling. So she's running back and forth to see him. Anyway, he's got a long road ahead of him, too. And what is Peg's son's name? Chris. 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 Let's remember Christopher. Yeah, and he's not a believer and he's been hurt a lot. Well, he's going to be still for a minute. And so, no yeah. kidding. It's he's going to be still for a minute. So let's just pray that while he's still, that, that, that he listens to the Lord. Because yeah. sometimes that's what the Lord has to do, is get us in a place where <coughs> we don't have anything better to do than to listen to the Lord. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And for Peg's strength. Yes. And Thank encouragement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mindy? Kenzie, um, you know, Brenda, Joe and Brenda, mm -hmm. Erica, Laura, Laura's daughter, Kenzie, um, she's had three open heart surgeries in two weeks, and they are starting to wake her up and wean her off of some things and trying to get her to breathe on her own and her, get her heart stronger. She still needs to have a heart transplant, but they, there's all kinds of, she's basically got a bionic heart at this, at this right. point, um, and, uh, <coughs> uh, just for, for continued healing. Just when you think there's like it's it's terrible and dire, the next time she has a report, it's just a little bit more hopeful, mm -hmm. a little bit more encouraging. And, and so, anyways, just yes. Pray, pray for Kenzie and yes, we'll remember Kenzie. Kenzie. Absolutely. Kenzie. Somebody just re responded to your text to all of us saying we are home. Just got in from Florida. Oh, okay. that must be Brenda. Brenda and Joe. Yes, well, praise the Lord. I'm glad they're home safe. We have missed them for sure. Yeah, you notice they said home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Lord is not home yet. <laughs> Clay. Remember Gail and her sister Patty? Yes. Let's remember Gail. Let's remember Patty. In Jesus' name. Deb? Please pray for my mom. She's got a, a stoma that causing problems when she goes in for radiation so they haven't been able to do it sometimes because something's different you know with her stomach and I don't know what it is but anyways she's had to go to the ER several times already to see um, where they've had to refix something and so that's going to put off her schedule and she's doing too much lifting and bending and stuff with my mm -hmm. stepdad trying to care for him and, and that's causing problems with all this other issue. And my brother Dave and his wife Lisa, who live in Florida, um, were told two years ago that he was going to be, he could work from home anywhere. So they moved to Florida from Virginia, and now he's got a third little boss who's saying, you have to report in Washington. And... Um, that my brother's really frustrated. Apparently, a lot of other workers are because they were also told the same thing. They live all over the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, from what I'm hearing, it's because the people who own those buildings in D.C. aren't making any money. Mm 
from right. where you can all the workers nobody's using the offices yeah so you know they they're making the same thing <coughs> coming down through this way um so we pray that god opens and closes yes. doors and takes care of the situation i don't know how this is going to work out we're looking at having to possibly move back to virginia and he owns an expensive place down in florida so well one thing we know and that is that favor ain't fair Yes. So let's remember, really, your entire family. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Yeah. And unlike me, he likes all that. <laughs> all right, Ken. Um, pray for our folks in Nepal, um, for Mark and Laura, for uh, their daughter, uh, or future daughter-in-law, who's six months pregnant and having constant contractions right now. So they Jesus. may need to bring the baby now, which may not be the best. But, um, and they, they need Jesus, David and, and that girl. So uh, Audrey or Aubrey? Audrey. 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 Mm -hmm. So lift them up. Um, the Mendozas are back home in Florida. It looks like the missions trip uh, to Honduras was, was great. Um, praise the Lord for safe travels there. Um, continue to pray for uh, our folks that are newly baptized, um, mm -hmm. looking to do Bible studies, and just the what God has been doing in our, our family. Mm -hmm. um, we need to keep supporting them in, in prayer. Yes, amen. amen. Um, speaking of favor, uh, we listed our car on Friday night and sold it today. Yep. Oh. Um, wow. And Yesterday, I spent a couple hours with Spectrum, and um, we have a reduced bill by 44%. For the church? Oh, yes. wow. Right. Yeah. Right. The Spectrum is who we get our internet and phone through here at the church. And so, if this works right in six months, it may be able to go down even further. So praise the Lord. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I went to Spectrum today, and I prayed about it. That's my deal. It's outrageous. And the Lord said, I'll give you favor. You go in person. I went. And the guy, I, I took a bill with me. And I told him, because they said, you have your um, promotion is up in the May. Mm -hmm. And and he, he, so I said, well, you said you don't have contract. He said, promotion. I said, don't try to mix up the English. Okay? <laughs> a promotion, a contract. He said, well, a contract would be if you had to sign it on. I said, well, a promotion. You're just trying to get people in. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't like to be deceived. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is a little ridiculous, and I want to see what you can do about it before the, I pay the next bill. I've never missed a payment. I've never been late. Mm -hmm. I've been billing. And and uh, Gish sent a thing, $400 um, AT&T card. So when I called, they don't have, I have a bundle. Mm -hmm. And so they would try to get me some, service with some, and the Lord said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. So I said, okay, so I let that go. In the meantime, the other guy, he calls out a supervisor, I guess, came out of the spectrum. And so he gave me, he says, he, he gave me a number to call tomorrow, because they were closed. And he says, if if they can't help me to come back with him, he would give me some, um, at, a, at a good rate, um, for the, pro the programs that I want. Uh -huh. Because they have a lot of things I don't even look at. You know, you've got 257 stations. Right. You know, don't yeah. look at you know, I don't even know what I have because right. I don't look at that. Right. I say I have to have my Christian stations, yeah. National Geographic, the, the things yeah. that I look at. And, you know, and so, Amen. anyway, so he said, Well, you come back, here's my card. I said, Because I prayed and I, I'm, I'm going to get some help to death. That's it. And so then when the supervisor came up, he said, If you don't get no help on the phone, you come back to me and give me this card. I got in the car. I said, Jesus, you don't never change. Mm -hmm. You're the same. That's if right. I ask you to take care of things. Take care, thank you. Yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Kitty? So, the back of my house, I think I mentioned that it, it got damaged. Uh, maybe not. But, um, so, had a guy come over um, that's in my neighborhood, and 
uh, is very elderly, and but he does a lot of stuff around, and so um, I just didn't think that he was going to be able to do what he talked about because of his knees, and he had to get under there and stuff. So I talked to uh, the son of um, the family who did my roof, or a very Christian family, and so he came out and um, told me what it would cost and everything, and it's underneath my deductible for my insurance. So, um, and, but he said he'd come out on the next rainy day, um, and then, so it, the thing, something blew off, and I was worried about all this wind, and so um, I called him today, and they're in Ohio, and he won't be back till Monday, and I'm kind of worried about, you know, the wind doing all the damage that had already happened, um, because he kind of, like, fixed it up, but it's, so um, the guy in the neighborhood, I'm going to approach him again and see if he could maybe hire an underling, a guy that's young with good knees, and to help him because it's got to be done inside, not just on the outside. <coughs> so um, if you could pray for me to yes. have a solution, you know, by the weekend. Yes, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Clay. Yes. Uh, pray for Connie's knee. She's having some pain and discomfort. All right. Yeah, All, right. All right. So when we start praying, um, if you've got some faith that the Lord can heal and move in Connie's knees, I want you to just step over there and lay hands on her. We're going to pray that the Lord moves in her body. Thank you for bringing that, Lewis. Thank you, All right. I want to give a praise report. Yesterday I left work and was headed back into Asheville. I'm on 191. And I just come past Clayton Road. I'm coming down by the river. Everybody starts throwing on their brakes. It's a very busy stretch of road because of I-26 being a nightmare. And so I throw on my brakes, and I realize three cars ahead of me, a massive tree has fallen completely across the road. And it's so large with so many huge branches, you can't see beyond it. Like, you can't see the traffic beyond it. You can't see anything. And I was thinking as I turned around, rolled down my window and started saying, there's a tree down, there's a tree down, turn around, there's a tree down, there's a tree down. Because it's so frustrating when you're sitting in traffic and you don't know why. Yes. And I pulled off on Clay Road and headed around to get on the interstate. And I was like, wow, three cars ahead of me. That road is so busy, that was maybe the difference of me leaving two minutes earlier. Maybe a minute and a half earlier maybe 45 seconds earlier and I could have been crushed and you think well it's not very often that people get crushed by trees and it's like that's true but I've seen it happen in the last year on the news and I just want to say twice yeah and I just want to say thank you Jesus that me and my little blue pickup truck are safe thank you Jesus and nobody else was crushed Nobody else was crushed. Stop. Thank you. Great. Now it's not about me, Mindy. <laughs> She's like, and also no one else was crushed. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. Sister Doug would probably say angels were lowering that tree just at the right time. Ease so it, it on down. The vehicle. That's right. Ease it on down. <laughs> All right. Let's take these knees to the Lord. And if a few of us could step back and just pray for Connie, that'd be awesome. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for blessing and moving and ministering in all these things, Jesus. Oh, in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, in Jesus' name. Bible class. Thank you, Jesus. 
to share this. I have always had a problem with memorizing. I don't have trouble with memory. I can remember things, but I have trouble memorizing. I can't even, when I go to the piano on Sunday morning, I make little sticky notes for everybody to know what they're going to sing. And I cannot write on one sticky note. I've got three songs to write down. That's all. <laughs> but I cannot write down one and hand it away until I've wrote it on another one or I forget before it's handed away. That's how bad my memory is. I was never able in school to be in a recital because they always wanted you to memorize the music. And y'all will notice that I always have words in front of me when I sing. I just can't remember. And years ago, I really, I really wanted to be able to memorize the word of the Lord because we don't know what's coming. And one of these days, we may not have this in front of us. And that, that was one of the reasons I wanted to be able to memorize as much as I could of the word. And uh, another reason was that I believe that there is power in the word Amen. and that it works healing in your body when you and in your mind and in your spirit and in those around you when you put that word inside of you and it stays so I really pray for the Lord to let me do that and he just helped me memorize verse after verse after verse after verse I still have to write down those sticky notes one at a time you know <laughs> But he has blessed me to be able to memorize the word. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just phenomenal what he's done. It's not anything that is humanly possible. Because tonight we're reading the first part of chapter 17 in Acts. I have memorized everything up, the whole book of Acts, up to that <laughs> point. To where I could quote it to you. That's awesome. And, you know, that's, that's just the Lord. That, nobody that's can do that. Yeah. Wow. That's just the Lord. And I'm, I just thank him for giving me that gift yes. wow. to, to bless me with that. Yes, amen. That's great. And you should be that. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And show me that will be right now sticking in. <laughs> I'll be reading it, not quoting it. <laughs> Acts 17, 1 through 12. When Paul and his companions had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue, uh, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus, I am proclaiming to you, is the Messiah, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. But other Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men, who have caused trouble all over the world, have now come here. And Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the other, 
and the others postponed and let them go. As soon as as soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were of no, more noble character than those in Thessalonica, Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. All right. Was our prayer session on on there? Yeah. Just want to mention, we went back to pray for someone. And sometimes people think, well, I've got this going on, so because I'm ill or because I have pain or whatever, I can't pray for this other person. But if you look at Job chapter 42, Job is told to pray for his friends mm -hmm. because God is not going to listen to them at all. Mm -hmm. And Job has not been healed. Right. Job, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. And, and all of these things were given to him, but not until after he prayed for his friends. So that's kind of a, a model for us that whatever's going on with you, that doesn't mean you can't pray for someone else. Amen. So, okay, what... Do you see God doing here? Well, <laughs> sounds like these folks are having the kind of week we had, right? <laughs> Just mm. chaos. Yeah. Well, one of the things I see is that God is reaching out to the prominent who can be a major influence at some times uh, with the other people. And when, let's say, the uh, average person sees a prominent person receiving the Lord, that speaks to them. I mean, look, look at us today. If we saw some movie stars or, mm -hmm. you know, um, politicians or whatever really coming mm -hmm. to Jesus, that would be impressive. So I see in a couple places where he is doing that work. No, oh, that's and interesting, yeah. And notice the difference between um, one city and the other. In Berea, they examined the scriptures, and they had a lot more belief because of that. Yeah. Yeah, that stood out to me so much, babe, because what, what they... What in the way it dis, Luke describes them, he's like, these are were more noble. Basically, he's mm -hmm. complimenting. He's like, these were awesome people who were studying the scriptures to make sure Paul wasn't a liar. <laughs> so, like when you say it like that, it seems like, <coughs> well, but it, you know, like should, no, that's what God wants us to do is to be mm -hmm. so hungry yes. for Him that when we hear something, we go straight to the source and I'm like, wait a second, is that the way it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had a readiness of mind. Whereas previously, the Jews, they had a decision before them. the scriptures were brought to them of their own words. Mm -hmm. And they still ignored them. Right. The other group, had a readiness of mind mm -hmm. open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that it says they searched the scriptures daily. Yeah. I noticed something kind of reading this section and um, looked at all oh, those neat little maps they put in the back of the book that show the, the journeys for Paul and Barnabas and then the second journey. Barnabas retraced some steps and it was a very small area really compared to where Paul ends up. And if you look at the letters that Paul wrote, he wrote to Rome he wrote to Corinth, to Galatia, to Ephesus, and that's the one place that's also mentioned in um, Revelation. <coughs> that's one of the seven churches. He wrote to Philippi. He wrote to Colossal. Um, he wrote to Thessal 
Thessalonica, and then he also wrote some personal letters. So in, this tr in these travels, um, these were the places that he, he wrote letters to. And we don't have all of them. If you read um, Colossians, no, I think I messed it up. Um, in Colossians 4, 16, it talks about, uh, let's see if I find it here. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. We don't have that. Um, he also mentions in one of the epistles that he writes, one of the churches, that he had written them a hard letter. We don't see that one either. So we have what God wants us to have. Amen. We don't have all of it. And they were supposed to share. When Paul went and, you know, expounded and reasoned and et cetera in the synagogue, three Sabbaths in a row, he probably was not laying it all out on that first day. He was probably building some foundation blocks to say, you know, you agree with this, right? You know, and building on that until they could see for themselves. Um, I had a rabbi once tell me that the Jews who are not messianic, that don't believe in Jesus, they do not read Isaiah 53. <laughs> because it's just such a picture of Jesus that they, they totally avoid it. They read, you know, the first five books of the Bible throughout the year. There's portions they read. They read some from, you know, the um, different prophets and, you know, songs and so on. They don't, they don't go anywhere near that, but, um, which is kind of interesting. But they share. Okay. Um, what do you see man doing here? There's quite a lot going on. Well, first of all, Paul, it says that it was a, it, it, as his manner was, mm -hmm. went mm -hmm. in, as soon as he got into town, he went to the uh, synagogue on this, for three Sabbath days, reasoned with him out of the scriptures. And Luke is writing this, mm -hmm. and he says, Paul was opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered um, and risen again from the dead. Um, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, so that's Luke telling Theophilus, who he's mm -hmm. writing to, mm -hmm. this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, you know, is Christ. Mm -hmm. So That's interesting. I yeah. hadn't looked at it that way. Yeah. You forget that this is a letter that Luke is writing. Yes. You know, I mean, the book of Acts starts out, O Theophilus, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you forget about it because it seems more like an oral history of what happened. Yeah, pretty exciting. One. Yeah. <laughs> and Jason just suddenly, his name just suddenly kind of appears. Yes, yes. Um, he, we don't really know a whole lot about him except that he apparently had to kind of promise that, you know, they would get these guys out of town <laughs> before they would let them go. Yeah, if you do kind of wonder if maybe this was a more familiar person to Theophilus. Because a lot of times when he names people, like Lydia, mm -hmm. he explains a seller of purple. Like, you don't know her, but this is who she was. This is where we met her. But in this particular case, he's like, mm -hmm. Jason's house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Jason. Everybody will know Jason. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe Theophilus, he knew Jason. You know, maybe. because there's such a close community, right. basically, and there's so few of the people, so. Yeah. I had a question for you. In verse 5, it says, But the Jews, which believe not, move with envy. What envy? What are the envious out there? The ones who. One of the readings that I did, you know, the different, um, you know, not just King James, um, name them as well, getting well 
called something Jew. They're not Jews, but they're prominent people, and they're they love God, and they're seeking. They're seekers, and so the Jews would have wanted them to be a part of them, to give into their treasury, to you know, and they lost them to the Christians, basically. Because um, I wondered about that too. So I was looking it up. Um, and then some people just like to cause trouble. Yeah. This group was definitely some rabble rousers, it seems like. I mean, they basically started a mob. Like, they're having a riot. Mm -hmm. But this, this uh, word for jealous is, is a verb that um, the definition is to be jealous, but it also has this uh, imitating the sound of boiling water uh, because they're so hot. And so, you know, they're, they're starting from a place, a bad place anyway. And they're not wanting someone to come and, and to burn with zeal. Uh, this, the word looks like it has to do with zealous, or, you know, and it may be the root of that. But you know, they're, they're so into their way they do church, they don't want to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to take their traditions and burn down the rest of them, you know. That is interesting because there, you see that in our present day society, people that are like, "Well, if things are not going to be the way that I believe they should be, right. then destroy it." There's like that sort of atmosphere in our society, anti -culture. right? Yeah, anti culture. Hmm. All right. What sin? And there's. There's quite a lot here. What sin do you see that we should avoid? That everyone should avoid? We should avoid envy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> we should avoid jealousy. Forming mobs. Right. Yes. Forming mobs, yeah. We're not saying we should definitely avoid yeah. forming mobs. You know, they rounded up some bad characters, but I'd say bad characters. <laughs> right. I like the old English fellows version. Fellows of the baser sort. <laughs> That's right. Of Lewd the fellows Lewd. of the baser sort. <laughs> <laughs> what version is that? Oh, James. 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 Uh, exactly. James. Verse 5. <laughs> Lewd fellows of the base are so they, they assaulted Jason's house. Yeah, right. now, yeah. assaulted. Was that the building as well as the people within it? Mm -hmm. uh, it so kind of sounds like it. Where the house was got. Yeah. But um, a lot of times you see a mob, and what are they doing? They're throwing bricks or stones or whatever, and you know, breaking windows and doing damage. And yeah, that must be in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, just um, uh, lying for basically false witness, you know, because like they're they're falsely accusing them. So that would certainly be. Uh, I don't know if this would be a sin, but how they are comparing, you know, King Jesus with their their minor little Caesar human being. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Not on the same level. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Well, they made Jason pay to get them out. They attacked the house and then made him pay. Yeah. Um, it kind of sounds like it. He had to pay a bond. And if it works like if one of us has to pay a bond, you're assuring that whatever, you're going to show up for court, or this is going to happen, or that's going to happen. What do they do? They get them out of town. So now you know why some prominent people had to be saved at that moment, because they were going to need some bond money. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of wonder, where is Paul when all this is going on? Mm -hmm. well, don't know how big that, that city was, but he was with the brethren. It yeah. does sound like he was with the brethren. 
I mean, it doesn't specifically name it. They just said, and certain brethren. <clears throat> and it said that they immediately sent um, Silas away. So yeah, it said that they didn't find them. When you look back, it says mm -hmm. when they found them not. Oh, I got you. When they so found them not, Paul was not there. Right. 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 Was he just maybe he was just minding his own business and doing going about the, the the father's business and ministering to people and not really realizing could what was be. happening on the other side of town. It could be. Maybe God made him invisible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did a wonderful. They did. Wonder <laughs> Jesus passed through a crowd before, yeah. and and they're not saying he was hidden. It, you know, they they let them go after they get the security from Jason. And immediately, the brethren send them away. Yeah. So they knew where they were and didn't give that up, apparently. Um, and notice that the first thing they did when they were arrived at the next city was they went into the synagogue. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. um, not over. Wash, we'll make rinse, rinse up repeat. <laughs> um, I rinse think I read it was about 70 miles away. Wow. So, Wow. Well, you know how Paul was. After 70 miles of walking, he's going, Oh, it's been building up inside of me for, oh, I don't know how long. <laughs> Get him to a synagogue. He's got to preach. <laughs> now, it seems like the, uh, when the mob took Jason here, then there was, in verse 8, and the trouble of the people and the rulers of the city when he heard these things. I think this this issue has taken place. They can't let, the rulers can't let this grow out of place because if Rome hears about it, then there are consequences. Mm -hmm. So it seems like that's the reason they let them go. It's like, we did what we did. That's it. We can't go anymore. You know? mm. Mm -hmm. So, do you see any promises to claim? You will make a way of escape. Amen. You will make a way of escape. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Yes. So the Messiah was a promise. Yes, amen. And he will open the gospel to those that can really promote it. Yeah. And save the purity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny, Diane, because sometimes we are more likely to discriminate against the wealthy than the poor. Yes. You know? I mean, Jesus pointed out, it's pretty difficult, you know, for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And they said, oh, so, wow, if that's the case, then how can anyone be saved, right? I mean, the, the apostles at the time, I mean, the disciples at the time were like, man, if it's hard to get into heaven when you're rich, then what chance do the rest of us have? And Jesus was like, right, with God, all things are possible. Like, and so I think for us, a lot of times we think, well... They already have everything. And it's like, no, actually, they already have everything, and no, it doesn't fulfill. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Us in the middle class are still thinking, if I can just make a little more money, buy a little more stuff, I'll be fulfilled. But rich people already recognize it doesn't work that way. Right. It doesn't fill you up. And so I love that that is, I love that this passage is in here to recognize there's a lot of people, there's leaders in this group, there's chief women in this group, there's, you know, um, you know wealthy people, there are people in different stations of life, mm -hmm. then, and it's like, God can do anything, everybody needs the gospel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I mean, there are problems, there. I'm just saying in here, the Lord watches over us, even if he has to put us in a location for safety. Or help us miss a tree, you know. 
Right. Yes. Yes. Like that tree. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, you know, it made me think example first, but then the promise that, like the Bereans, because they search the scriptures daily to see if Paul and Silas were, were, were whether the things that they said were so, that that's a promise to us that so long as we seek and, for me, read my Bible every day, that I will always be able to find the answers I'm looking for. Amen. And, um, yes. and, and I also see it, so, so, and also, like, they only had the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures. Right. And um, I don't think they, I don't know that anybody had received anything from Paul yet. Right. Um, and so, um, like, I imagine that Paul had to use the scriptures that he knew of mm -hmm. to direct them to, like in Isaiah mm -hmm. and some Psalms and things. So, um, you know, that's another thing of example. Amen. Yeah, it, it, yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. It's a promise and an example. I like that. Another promise to claim, it is not written right here, but it's written um, to the church at Philippi telling them, um, he, Paul was essentially thanking them mm -hmm. for listening to the Lord on how to provide for him. And yes. he said, even when I was in Thessalonica, mm -hmm. you sent once and again to my necessity. Mm -hmm. So they were wow. sending stuff to give provision to Paul while he was in Thessalonica. So if we, you know, the Lord will always make a way. Yes. You know, the, he, they were in a hostile environment there. Um, Paul, in other times, had been a tent maker, you know, to try to make, to provide for himself. Mm -hmm. But apparently here, it was just such a hostile environment. He may not have been able to do that, and, but the Lord provided Amen. Well, now in the New International Version, it doesn't say tent maker; it says awning. That's because where you work. She's giving a plug to her. If I could point out that uh, Paul's reaction in crisis is different than most of us. In, in crisis, we tend to fall apart. And in crisis, he tends to give glory to God. Mm -hmm. And when you look at, I mean, how many, how many of his letters did he write while he was in prison? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what would we we'd be feeling sorry for ourselves? But that's an example for us to, to, to take here is, is when we're in crisis, we may want to readjust our, our outlook. Amen. Yeah. I also love the example of these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. I love that. It's like, wow. You know, they're, 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 the rumors of their you know, involvement in Christ has already gone before them and people were like, wait a second. <laughs> Y'all have turned the world upside down. Y'all, it was the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were walking and, mm -hmm. you know, taking boats. Yeah. And yet, they turned the world upside down. And it's true, yeah. you know? That's a great example. Yes. It makes me think of um, the uh, Asbury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. that they really just, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Another example. I'm still stuck on the fact that Jason and the other they forced Jason and the other believers to post bonds and then they released them. And they were willing to do that. I think if someone had came and searched my house, I would not be willing to post bonds. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they were okay. You know what that means. I'll have to post bond for her. <laughs> <laughs> but they but the believers were willing to do whatever they could to, to make things go smoothly. Mm -hmm. So they posted bonds for those that the city would calm down. Right. 
And the inclination with that word is that it was substan substantial. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. But isn't it interesting that in it's ministry, yeah, yeah. yeah, that in this passage of scripture where you find out that there are prominent and wealthy, you know, ruling class people here, and they're able to afford to post bail substantial amount. That in spite of that, in this very city is where Paul required sustenance from the church at Philippi. Right. Yeah. And I'm just going to tell y'all, sometimes rich people are so stingy. <laughs> <laughs> Another example, in verse 11. It says, And they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. That's readiness. We need to know. Yes. We need to search the scriptures. Who were, were the were the prominent people in Thessalonica or in Berea? It's both, both. actually, because it was chief women, not a few in Thessalonica, okay. as well as devout Greeks, a great multitude in Thessalonica. And then you had the noble that were more noble in Berea. Honorable women. I really like that phrase, receive the word with all readiness of mind. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, they were ready by <coughs> studying the scriptures every day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, yeah. and just able to just receive it. Yes, and just for the preview, there's more to this story coming next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice! That was nice, Deb. <laughs> to go back to Jason and these others, they were not in the wrong. They were falsely accused. And they could have tried to, you know, do something with that. And they did not, probably just so that they could calm the troubled waters. And that is very possibly Bridget, what God wanted them to do wow. instead of not, you know, not not paying the bond, right. you know, not right. giving the pledge. Perhaps to also, um, Paul's going to move on anyways, so he had to move on a little sooner perhaps than, than originally planned. But perhaps they thought God's in this somehow. Yeah. And yeah, we don't like it. We're being falsely right. accused, and there's something about that in the scriptures. But they were not in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and we don't know how those people that stormed the house that were bailed out, what effect did that have? Because they had to know they were in the wrong. Mm -hmm. And then this man that they were attacking mm -hmm. posted their bail for them. Mm -hmm. So you, you never know how mm -hmm. God uses. I'm not sure what you mean. I thought it was Jason and the, and uh, certain brethren that they posted were, the bail that that actually were arrested and put in jail until they posted their bond. No, I think it was the people that attacked the house. Do you I think? think? I misunderstood. Uh -uh. No, I think it's Jason and certain brethren are basically that that the people drew Jason and certain brethren brought them before the rulers mm -hmm. and <coughs> they were just stirring up things and then. Mm -hmm. When they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. Okay, I'm listening. Yeah. Right um, but isn't it interesting? <laughs> it's funny. Isn't it interesting that this story comes right after Paul is in jail and they say, okay, you can go. And he's like, I'm not going to. You have to come get me. Whereas then you have right after that, you've got this one, and where these people are like quietly paying their bail and coming out. And it just goes to show you, like, when the Spirit, the Spirit doesn't always make sense on what, why did Paul say, no, you're going to have to come, let me out, you're going to have to come apologize, or whatever. And then these folks are like quietly paying it, it's down. 
Yet the Spirit of the Lord was served in both cases. Like there's so much about our walk with God that you can't just write down rules to say, when in prison, you know, <laughs> falsely accused, always refuse to leave unless they come get you personally. You know what I mean? Like our walk with God is a lot more about, so what are the circumstances that God is moving in and what is he up to? A lot of times you don't know, so you just have to kind of go with what the Spirit is moving in your heart, you know? Yeah. Amen. Which is why it's important to examine the Scriptures every day. Yes, that's right. And to receive the Word with readiness of mind. But to also be listening to the Spirit. Yes. Sister Juanita was telling us earlier that God told her that she would have favor if she went to a certain place mm -hmm. that day. Right. And she was listening. Yep. So she now has a card of somebody that she can talk to if she doesn't get some satisfaction in this that's right. situation. Um, that's right. So, you know, that's, that's important too. Um, and isn't it interesting that Kevin called the same people yesterday and didn't have to go in person. You know, he did, he was able to, but that's not what God had for you. You had to go see them in person. There's some reason that they that God has you in their lives. Right. I had another woman that didn't know how to check in, so, so she was out, you know, older lady like me, and we couldn't get it. I said, she said, well, I don't know how to do it either. I said, well, that's what they up there for. To raise my hand. That's right. That's right. You got to get right there. So when she said, thank you, that was nice of you. So yeah, we, there you go. So I met somebody right in the same, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right. Um, commands to keep. Share the word, whatever your circumstances, whether you be in jail or whether yes. you be in the synagogue or whether you have to leave and go to the next city and share Amen. it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> do, do what you can to help those that are preaching the gospel or are going out as missionaries or whatever endeavor they're yeah. into with what you have, with, with what your abilities are. Yes. Yeah. Be mindful and where Jason kind of went out on a limb, so to speak, and he he did all that too, and he had the, the means for what he did. But anyway, we all have some means. So right. We should be uh, Amen. responsive as well. Mm -hmm. um, it says Paul was explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. And, um, you know, <laughs> we often... Um, get mad when, when someone <clears throat> says something against what we, we think or believe. And it doesn't even have to be about religion. It can be about what bread you eat. Um, it's, a, it's an angry time. And it seems like it was then also. But I think God's calling us into humility um, because there are times when we will have to suffer. And part of that, he will get glory from. And part of that, we will grow in faith and favor and, and, and strength. And, and so if we learn to react out of humility, um, anything can happen. Yeah. Um, I, uh, Deb, I don't know if we're supposed to raise our hands. <laughs> uh, because some people do, some people don't. Yeah. Um, I think one of the commands is never underestimate God and that he always has a plan for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Never underestimate um, Be in the word, um, not only to learn and study along with those that are teaching you, but also to check that what you're being taught is truth mm -hmm. so that you're not being misled. Amen. Mm -hmm. They're not always right. Mm -hmm. Honest. That's right. He's saying the Bereans went home after they heard sermons. They went home to see if these things were true. Mm -hmm. yeah. They didn't go out a date. Somebody, we in a church, and I think they're not preaching a word. I'm going to check it out. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Um, Kitty reminded me of something I used to teach my staff at, at Grove Park. Is never underestimate the depth of a guest pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> because you can, you can, you know, yeah. you can do a lot better. Right. And that does have to do with the glass ceilings we, uh, we talked about uh, the mm-hmm. other Sunday. Don't underestimate what God will do what in our God lives. What God can do. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. But you know, the example that shows of the Bereans, though, they went home and searched the scripture. Mm-hmm. There's a, there is a orderly way in which to that's good. Yeah, that's good. It should be done in decency and in order. Yes, that's good. That's good. I'm sure they came back the following weeks or met them in the marketplace or wherever and said, hey, you know, I was looking this up and, you know, there had to right. I'm sure there was some exchange there. Yeah. Yeah. Fellowship. John? Yeah, yeah. Preach the truth. Regardless of the consequences or the results. Mm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In what chapter four? They're, you know, they've just suffered and they go and pray and the whole room is shaken and they're filled again with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And they can speak the word with boldness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know. Um, It's so easy sometimes when the Lord doesn't give you an earthquake and open the prison door or the means to pay your bond Well, to say, well, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not as good. Mm. I'm not as good as Paul. I'm not as good as Jason. I'm, I'm not as important to God as them. But if you go to the 11th chapter of Hebrews, it talks about them. It says they were tortured. They were stoned. They were, some of them were, you know, slain with a sword. Mm -hmm. Some of them, it it was just horrible things that happened to them. Mm -hmm. They wandered about destitute. They, They weren't even able to go home. They had to stay in caves. And they didn't have provisions. They didn't have clothes. They wore Skin, goat skins. And so there's times when things happen in our life and we say, Lord, I thought you were going to work all that out. Mm. And here I am in the middle of a mess. Yeah. And sometimes he doesn't. He waits to see, are you going to still love me? Are you still going to serve me? Are you still going to trust me? Wow. Um. What really brought this to my mind is I've been reading in the book of Judges. The last part of Judges is about the tribe of Benjamin and all of Israel going against Benjamin. And they slew so many of them that there was not enough to multiply to continue the generations of that tribe. And yet, and it looked like that was the end. Mm-hmm. It looked like God had turned his back on them and things were not ever going to be different. But the first king of Israel came out of Benjamin. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So God can turn your circumstances. It may not be how you thought they were going to be turned. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he can that's, turn them. That's quite and a he story. Can, mm-hmm. He wow. can make he can make a whole different situation that you never even dreamed he could make out of a mess. Yeah. He loves a mess. Yeah. <laughs> he does. He, does. he seems to really he love a mess. mess. Because he gets yeah. glorified. <laughs> he gets glorified in that. Yes. Because there was nothing you could do, nothing that you could accomplish in that mess. Amen. He had to step in and take that mess. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You read you read Job. He made Leviathan. Oh, man. Yeah. He made, he doesn't call it a dragon, but he makes a creature that sounds like a fire-breathing dragon. It does. And mm-hmm. those, they're not greater than God. They're scary, fierce creatures. Right. They drink up the lake. And yet God made them. And they're there for his pleasure. So, what are we? Yeah. And yeah. 
And speaking of the mess that Paul had to walk away from in mm -hmm. Thessalonica, turned around two of the greatest epistles yeah. with the greatest <laughs> promises. That's where we find yes. out, you know, that's yeah. where it, it talks about um, uh, y'all don't be afraid because the Lord himself is going to come. Mm -hmm. yes, We're going to yes. meet him in the clouds, right. comfort mm -hmm. each other with that. That's where those scriptures are. It yes. was to this mess. That's right. Mm -hmm. The letters to the Thessalonians. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. Does anyone have anything else? Another thought? Yeah. All right. Well, Lord. We are so thankful we have this place we can gather and these loved ones we can gather with and that we can share it with anyone who cares to get on Facebook and listen to it. We're thankful that we can pray for each other, that we can hold each other up, that we can love on each other. We're thankful for the food that people yes. cook and bring and share. And, yes. and we're thankful for your word. Because where would we be without your word? And Jesus was the word who became flesh. We're so thankful for that. We're so thankful that you gave that to us. And that we have the truth and we can hide it in our hearts. And Sister Douglas has learned so much of it. And we need to do more of that. But we need to search the scriptures daily. So help us to remember to do that. And to just be in your word as much as we can be. And to share that out to everyone we can. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.